Hello everyone, Hyper here, and today's video will be the Frost DK guide for patch 9.0 of the Shadowlands. This video will be focused exclusively on raiding. In a future video, I will also have some tips and different builds you can be running for Mythic Plus and stuff like that, but this video will be only related to the raid. As always, I will try to cover everything you need to get you started from changes, um, moving from BFA to Shadowlands, talents, stats, covenants, everything that's related to covenants like soul binds, conduits, um, legendaries, and a little bit of gameplay tips. Before we get started with the video, I wanted to give a huge shout out to all of my patrons who support me. Thank you so much. And if you'd like to join my Patreon and check out the exclusive rewards that are available, you can find the link to it in the description box. The first thing I want to cover are spells that we gained moving from BFA into Shadowlands because Frostic actually got a few. Uh, mainly, and the most important ones are Anti-Magic Zone, 2 minute cooldown, 20% magic DR for 10 seconds, super useful for mythic raiding, this kind of secured DPS DK spot in the raid. Um, even if we do kind of mediocre damage in coordinated mythic raiding, this can be extremely useful. Then as an added kind of personal defensive, we got Lichborn, which is again 2 minute cooldown, a draw upon the unholy energy to become undead for 10 seconds, increasing your leech by 10% and making you immune to charm, fear and sleep. Um, this also means that you can use Lichborn after those effects were cast on you, like after you get feared, you can Lichborn um, as kind of a pseudo PvP trinket that is pretty useful. And it's also useful to have 10% leech, especially while you're doing a lot of damage, like in Breath of Sindragosa, for example, you'll be healing for quite a lot. Now for kind of less important spells that we got, we did get Raise Dead back, which summons a ghoul for a minute. It will auto attack your target a little bit, do a little bit of damage. Um, this little guy we pretty much just macro into our offensive abilities and anytime we Breath of Syndragosa we're gonna also raise dead. Kind of paired with our raise dead ability we also got Sacrificial Pact. It costs 20 runic power and it has a 2 minute cooldown. Um, you sacrifice your ghoul dealing shadow damage to 8 nearby enemies and heal them for 25% or heal yourself for 25% of your maximum health. This can either be used as an offensive or defensive cooldown. On AoE, you can pretty much summon a ghoul, then explode him. Um, on a single target, you pretty much want to keep an eye on your tracker, and when it gets to like sub 5 seconds, at any point you can explode it. Or, if you can't be bothered, then just use it as a defensive cooldown, and it's honestly not really going to make much of a difference to your DPS. And then in the offensive spell category, we got two new ones, first one being Death and Decay. Um, pretty much forget about this ability unless you're Night Fae. If you're any of the other Covenants, Death and Decay will play absolutely no role in your rotation. And then the second offensive one we got is Death Coil. Again, it has such fringe and niche uses that your average player is not going to press Death Coil pretty much ever. Um, so just put it on your bars so it's there, but in general, I don't really see situations where you'll end up using this. Um, there are a few tips that I will give you in my advanced guide um, when it comes to like macroing some stuff together, but on average, just forget about Death Coil. Um, it's not going to do you too much good. Okay, so let's cover talents because in BFA, we pretty much ran the same exact talent setup. So if you play Breath of Syndragosa back then, then you're probably familiar with this. In the first row, we have Cold Heart, hands down best talent, um, pretty nice little single target nuke. Um, in the second row, we have Runic Attenuation or Murder Sufficiency. These two are very similar in terms of DPS, um, but in my opinion, RA feels a little bit more stable. Sometimes you can go on either good luck streaks with Murder Sufficiency or on bad luck streaks. And while sometimes they will feel good, other times it will mean that your Breath of Syndragosa will come to an early end because you're not proccing enough runes. So RA is kind of a good middle ground where it's stable runic power gain to feed your Breath of Syndragosa. Then in tier 3, your choice is either Blinding Sleet or Asphyxiate. Kind of depends on the content you do. In general, um, they're only going to be super useful in Mythic+, less so in Raiding. Tier 4, we take Frozen Pulse. Tier 5, 
again, completely up to you. For progression, I suggest either permafrost or death's pact. Um, and then once you're doing content where you're not really in danger of dying, then you can pick up Wraith Walk. Tier 6, Gathering Storm in all situations. And then tier 7, of course, Breath of Syndragosa, since this whole talent build revolves around it. Next, let's talk about stats a little bit. Death Knights got fairly lucky because all three of the DPS builds, Unholy, BOS Frost, and Obliteration Frost, all use pretty much the same stats. On all of them, you want to prioritize a mastery. And then besides that, it doesn't really matter. Um, crit, Haste, and Versatility all have generally the same value when it comes to damage output. I prefer to play with a little bit higher crit and haste than versatility, but that's purely from how good the spec feels to play, not from a numerical standpoint. Um, so as long as you have mastery on most or all your pieces, you're good to go. And the enchants we use as Frost DK will be the same again across all of the builds that you can play. Uh, you will want eternal stats on your chest, you will want eternal strength on your gloves, um, and then Tenet of Mastery on both your rings. And then for your weapons, I suggest using Razor Eyes on your main hand weapon and Fallen Crusader on your offhand weapon. And yes, this means that you should be using dual wield weapons or one handed weapons, one in each hand, um, because it is slightly better than using a two hander. Next, let's talk legendaries. For the Breath of Sindragosa build, you have essentially two options. Um, the main one and most important one that I suggest that you get is Kultira's Favor. This one drops from Sludge Fist in Nathria. This will be the legendary that you take in most situations on single target, on limited target cleave, like if you have two to three targets, then it's still probably the best. Um, and then once you move on to like Mythic Plus, for example, or AoE fights such as Sun Kings or the second to last boss, um, Rage of the Frozen Champion will actually be slightly better. It's essentially going to give you some runic power whenever you use up a rhyme proc, and on AoE you want to prioritize using those just because it's going to end up being more damage. So your primary legendary will be Kul'Tiras, and your secondary for AoE fights should be Rage of the Frozen Champion. Now let's talk Covenants, because this is where the difficult decision lies. Um, Frost DK unfortunately has a pretty big divide between which Covenant is best for what scenario. I will give you my recommendation, but ultimately the choice is up to you. So for Breath of Sindragosa, the main covenant you should be looking at is Venthyr. Venthyr has a pretty decent single target synergy with the Swarming Mist. You will get a tiny bit of runic power, but really where Venthyr's power lies is also where Breath of Sindragosa's power lies, and that is on Cleave and AoE. So in those situations, Venthyr is going to excel because Swarming Mist will give you runic power based on how many enemies you're actually hitting with it. This means that if you're fighting 3 plus enemies, 4 plus enemies, you can essentially use Swarming Mist and you will get so much runic power that your Breath of Syndragosa will just be kept up by itself without even you having to you know, spam out buttons to generate runic power. However, this does come with the downfall that on single target, you are going to be a little bit less than optimal. For pure single target damage, Kyrian seems to be the best option. However, single target is very niche part of the game, even though single target sims, for example, tend to be the go-to. If you think about it, in Castle Nathria, there are only four single target bosses um, in the entire raid and three of them are pretty early on. So it's a question of, do you want to optimize for those four bosses or would you rather optimize for the six bosses? Two of which are um, the last two in the dungeon where you're going to be doing cleave and AOE damage. So those are potentially going to be also more difficult. So it's better to optimize for them. So my general recommendation, if you're going to be playing Breath of Syndragosa for raiding in particular, go with Venthyr. This is where the caveats start coming in. If you are a player who also likes playing Obliteration, for example, then Venthyr will start losing value because Obliteration has very little synergy with the Swarming Mist ability. And this is where other options start to pop up, most notably the Necrolords. So Necrolord has a pretty decent synergy with Obliteration, giving you quite a bit of single target damage, but most notably better AoE damage. 
and in general is going to be your best option for the obliteration build, uh, which again, I will talk about in a future video. So in general, I recommend choosing between Venthyr and Necrolord. If you know you're going to stick to Breath of Syndragosa, go Venthyr. If you think you're going to swap between the talent builds or maybe potentially play some Unholy as well, then go ahead and pick up the Necrolords. Within each covenant, let's talk a little bit about the Soulbinds. So for Necrolord, your best bet will be a many where in the first row you will take lead by example, then you will unlock a potency slot where you will want to put an Everfrost Conduit. This is the conduit that increases your Remorseless Winter damage. Then you will unlock Magnificent Skin, and then a Finesse Conduit. If you're playing Breath of Syndragosa, always put Spirit Drain in your Finesse slot. A Fleeting Wind can be a little bit of nice extra mobility, but getting extra runic power off of interrupts, especially during Breath of Syndragosa, is going to make a massive difference. Then in the next row, you can choose whichever one you prefer. And then moving down, you will unlock an Endurance slot where you will want to slot either the Hardened Bones Conduit to help yourself out a little bit uh, during Lichborn, or the AMZ Conduit, which will help your raid out a little more. Then in the last row, you kind of have an option between either going down the path of Gristle Toes or going straight down to Gnashing Chompers. Gnashing Chompers will be a little bit better for like AoE fights where you're killing adds, but in general, I think it loses out a little bit of value in the raid versus Gristle Toes, where you will be able to pick up an extra potency conduit. If you go down the path of Gristle Toes, then I recommend picking up the Accelerated Cold Conduit. That's kind of the only other one that has some at least decent interaction with the Breath of Syndragosa build. The other two are very heavily focused on obliteration, so you're not going to benefit from them too much. It is also worth noting that once you can unlock uh, the Bonesmith all the way to the last talent row, it will be competitive in damage with a many. But I think in general, a many will just be a little bit better for raiding because it is more valuable when you have allies nearby versus Bonesmith Hymir, which is kind of better if you're doing stuff by yourself. And this is because Ameni's first talent, lead by example, kind of relies on you having allies nearby to gain additional strength whenever you press your Abomination limb. Alright, now let's take a look at the Soulbind if you picked the Venthyr Covenant. Your choice is pretty much going to be between Nadia and Theotar. Um, Theotar, I think, is being a little bit overvalued just because the first talent that you pick up, Soothing Shade, kind of relies on you standing still to get the full benefit. If you ever have to move, that means that you're moving out of the mastery buff, so you're losing its entire value. Obviously, you will not always have to move out of it, but sometimes it's bound to happen, especially in Mythic Raiding. So for this reason, I think Nadja is a better and more consistent option. So if you pick her, I would recommend going with Thrillseeker in row 1, then going down the left-hand side, picking up a Potency Conduit, and again, here you will just want to take the Everfrost Conduit, moving down into Agent of Chaos, then into a Finesse Conduit, where again, you will put Spirit Drain, and then you will just go straight down the middle, all the way to Exacting Preparation. This means that you will get two extra uh, Defensive Conduits, which means that in this build, you will only have access to one Potency one. However, I think that the extra benefit you get on uh, food, class and your weapon enchant. So on your Fallen Crusader, um, you will get 3% extra strength whenever it procs. This can be pretty useful. Or if you'd prefer to pick up a finesse slot instead of the defensive one, you can also head down the right hand branch to Dauntless Duelist, which will also be a very good DPS option. All right, let's talk about the rotation for Frost DK. Luckily, it is not super difficult. The main thing that you want to focus on is keeping up Breath of Syndragosa, and early on in the expansion is going to be a little bit more difficult, then once we get some gear it becomes a little bit easier. But in general your opener for example is going to be really consistent. You want to start off by pressing 3 obliterates. If you get any rhyme procs go ahead and use them on Howling Blast. After that you can press your covenant ability either Abomination Limb or a Swarming Mist, depending on which Covenant you are, followed up by your Breath of Syndragosa macro. Now within this macro, you should have several abilities added, and you can find the macro 
I'll add it to both the description box and pin it in the comments. You essentially want to have Pillar of Frost, Breath of Sindragosa, Empower Rune Weapon, um, any unused trinket that you have. You can even add your potion and you can add a racial ability if your class has an unused one like Orc, for example. And after that, you want to follow it up by Remorseless Winter and then just start using Obliterates. Then once your Pillar of Frost is about to run out in the last 2 to 3 seconds, you want to go ahead and use your Cold Heart, followed up by your Frostworm's Fury. At the beginning, I recommend always using those two abilities as late within your Pillar of Frost as possible. Then once you're kind of used to the rhythm of how it plays, you can start min-maxing it a little bit by paying attention to your Unholy Strength proc that you get from your weapon enchant and make sure that you use those two abilities within a weapon enchant proc if you get it. If you don't get it, sometimes it happens, nothing you can do about it. From there, the rotation is super simple. Keep up Remorseless Winter, use up any Rhyme procs you have with Howling Blast, spend your runes with Obliterate, spend your runic power with Frost Strike um, until your next Pillar of Frost is up, and then use that Pillar of Frost by itself, and then the following Pillar of Frost again will sync up with Breath of Syndragosa. So that's pretty much how it plays. Now let's take a look at it on the target dummies. And we run in, do one, two, three obliterates. We got a rhyme proc, then give it a good like two count before you press your macro. Uh, so we press our covenant ability, our macro. Then we look at our pillar of frost. When it's about to run out, I will use my other abilities, uh, my cold heart and my frostworm fury. I also snuck in the Blood Elf passive there just to get us a little bit of extra runic power to keep our Breath of Sintragosa, and then eventually it falls off. And then from here we're pretty much just cruising, pressing our buttons, mainly Frost Strike and Obliterate, and then whenever we get Rhyme proc. So that's basically how Frost DK plays. Thank you so much for watching this guide. I really hope the information in the video helped you out to get you started with Frost DK and Castle Nathria. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comment section below, or you can also join my Discord where I will answer any questions that I get. If you guys want to see some live DK gameplay during the Race to World First, you can also check out my Twitch channel where I will be streaming every single day until the last boss dies. So if you want to drop by, watch me play, maybe ask a few questions, you can find the link to it in the description box. Again, guys, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you on the next video.